This is the 2024 GMC Yukon XL Denali Ultimate. And besides being a mouthful to say, it's definitely something that is in the running for being the ultimate full-size SUV. Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today we're borrowing this model from Morgan at Buick GMC to give you the information to answer that question. Is it the ultimate full-size SUV? It literally has everything that these models have to offer. The exterior color is sterling metallic. We'll open the rear door right here to show you the Alpine Umber interior. I'm trying to give you the best view I can without having a lot of shadow cast because of the positioning of the sun. But sometimes we just have to work with what is available. Now, for those of you who may say, hey, Tom, I don't see the link down in the description of the video to this model. You usually leave that. Well, this one's already sold. So what I will do is leave the best link I can for these models for the dealership. So if you do want to know more, check that link out and tell whoever you talk to that Tom from Vehicle Visionary sent you their way. Let's dig in a little bit deeper into what we have here because there is a lot going on. So you're gonna have a specific look with the front grill here what other grill do we have right besides the front grill? Let's just say the grill, but hey, I like to give you an obvious excuse to laugh, and I just did, so you're not laughing with me, you're laughing at me. And you also will notice right here, if you look at that GMC logo and you say to yourself, you know, I really like the GMC logo, but I'd like something other than red. Well, here's your option. And you do have a forward-facing camera right here, but one thing these don't have, at least not yet, is the front camera washer that the Sierras have. So, not that it's that big of a deal, but at this price point and for what it is, I think it should. Tell me what you think down in the comments section. And a very nicely laid out, and I'd say, go as far as saying elegant looking, headlight housing. Now that flickering effect you see right there, that isn't really happening. That just has to do with my GoPro that I'm filming the video with. But you will find LED lighting everywhere you look where there are lights. LED headlights, LED fog lights, LED daytime running lights, and we'll also find LED tail lights at the rear when we get back there. This model is four-wheel drive, by the way. And since I mentioned that this model is four-wheel drive, it is rear-wheel drive until you go into four-wheel drive. But what about your tire and wheel size? 275 on your width, you have a 50 series sidewall, and wrapped around the 22-inch wheels. And as we work our way up, we have our heated power adjustable, power folding, side view mirrors, turn signal indicators built in, blind spot monitoring as well. And let's do this. I'll show you these side view mirrors in action. And all I'm gonna do is push this button. That way you can make that happen on command if you so desire. Now, we'll turn the lights back on here for the rest of our demonstration. But I did want to also show you the power steps here, the power assist steps. And there's a couple of things you can do with these. Obviously, they're going to deploy when you open the doors or someone else opens one of the doors to get in. And then they stay out for a couple of seconds or so. That way, if someone needs to jump back out in a hurry, they're still there. Now, if you're washing your Yukon and you have the power assist steps, there's actually a setting in the infotainment screen that allows you to keep those deployed if you want to. Yes, you could just leave the door partially ajar, something like that, and they would stay out, but it's more convenient to just make that change in the interior. Nice large windows, a very long and large interior, and that gives the advantage of a lot of leg room a lot of headspace and a lot of cargo capacity. And a very clean look here on the rear. And the reason for that is because, well, we don't have an exposed rear window wiper in this area. It's neatly tucked away within the rear roof spoiler. And we finish things off here. Let's give a little bit better view since we can back here with the LED tail lights. And last but not least, we have our quad tip exhaust. And speaking of that quad tip exhaust, what exactly is it exhausting? Let's pop the hood and find out. Under the hood is the most powerful option available for any of these models. Now with this model, you could go with what we have here, the 6.2 liter V8, or you can go with the three liter diesel version if so desired. In this case, 420 horsepower, 
460 pounds feet of torque. It is naturally aspirated. For those of you who say, I am completely anti-turbocharger, and it's made into a 10-speed automatic transmission. And for grins and giggles, because, well, it has the aerodynamics of a brick, and it's a very large vehicle. <laughs> MPGs, 14 city, 18 highway, 16 combined. And easy to remember how many miles you're supposed to drive or how many gallons you'll use per every 100 miles driven. 6.2 with a 6.2 liter V8 under the hood. And you saw the gas door over here that allows you to fill up your gas tank over here on the driver's side. You may have noticed that earlier when we were walking around the vehicle. But if you're curious to know, this gas tank will hold 28 gallons of gas. And before we move off of the subject of the gas tank, speaking of gas, I know there's people out there that will say that you have to run premium gas in these Denali Ultimates when you have that 6.2 liter V8 under the hood. The truth is that you don't have to. It is recommended, but you can run regular if you want to. You won't get the same gas mileage or the same performance, but that's not a big deal. And how about practical use? When properly equipped, the Yukon XL will tow up to 8,200 pounds. And real fast, before we move on to too much more, let me take advantage of the sun being at my back here. There is the remote. You can see everything that's here. You can open and close the power tailgate. You can use remote start right there. You can see what all is here. You can tow up to 8,200 pounds, but how about cargo capacity? Well, the first thing is to access this. You can use the remote to access this area. You can use the button in this area. You can also use the hands-free feature right here. Well, I say you can. Let's see if I can get that to work. There we go. That was just a goof on my part, I guess. Not sure why that didn't work. But if you ever come back here and you'll run into that exact situation that I just showed you and it doesn't work and you swipe your foot or kick under there a couple of times and it's not working, here is what you need to do. You can always manually open that door no matter what. So if the battery died for some reason or something along those lines happened, well, no big deal. You can still gain access to that area. But if you're having trouble getting it to open, here is another way that you can not only open and close that door back there, you can push this button right here, but see how it's set to max? You can also set it to three fourths and it can also be set to off. So that's what you need to check if you ever run into that particular situation, most likely that's going to be the problem. Cargo capacity comes in at 41.5 up to 144.7 cubic feet. This model does come with a spare tire. You can gain access to everything right here to change that tire. You can get this floor completely out of the way. Kind of hard to do one handed, but that's not all you have back here. There's a lot of functionality that could make this really Instead of just being the ultimate full-size SUV, it may be the ultimate tailgating full-size SUV. And I don't mean driving down the road tailgating slow pokes, although I would understand if you did that. But you have the power outlet right here, so that helps out a lot. And if you really want to maximize cargo space back here, you have the set two sets of switches right here. So here's what we're going to do. We're first going to lower the rear seats, and all I'm going to do is just hold those buttons down until the seats are completely flat. And then we'll do the same thing with the middle row seats right here. We just hold those buttons down there. Let's see if we can get that one to go down for us. Sometimes you have to make sure you're pushing it. There we go, that helps. So here's the difference between the two rows of seats. I can raise the rear seats back up by pushing these buttons right here but the middle seats come up manually. You notice that you have the up and down arrows on these two sets of switches, but you only have down right here, but nothing up here. So what that means is you'll have to go and manually raise those back up. Not a big deal, you can make the kids do that just to make your life a little bit easier. And from this vantage point, maybe not the best, but you can see the panoramic sunroof. And we'll take a look into the interior in a little bit more in-depth manner than what we've done already. The armrests here are nice and comfortable. They're also very large, very large for rear doors, obviously on a full-size SUV. That's not that unusual, but you'll have your nice wood grain paneling right there. You've got quite a bit of contrast here with the different materials, your contrast stitching, and the upper and the lower door bins. So quite a bit of space. 
Also rear seat pockets here. A lot of storage throughout the interior. Now, let's talk a little bit about these middle row seats. In fact, I don't know. There we go, I can do that. In case you are curious, there's plenty of leg room back here with the third row. However, you can see the difference between the seats as far as what we have as far as adjusting that. It can be increased or it can be decreased, whichever is necessary. I don't know that anybody would sit this far forward. Maybe some of the little kids, they're watching the screens here with the rear entertainment package that this model has. I told you, it literally has everything. But that's an option. And obviously here is the control for moving the seats back and forth. And you'll notice times two right here in the arrow, just a little diagram of what happens here. So I'm gonna hit that one time. Let's see if we can get that to come down. There we go. This seat apparently needs a little work or something. But if I hit that a second time, then the seat gets right up and out of the way and makes it very easy to gain access to this rear seating area. So let's see what we have. Now, I have the seat right there. You can see how much leg space I have. It really doesn't matter how much there is or is not. There's plenty of leg room. Let's move over here to where this seat is all the way out of the, or all the way back, I should say. I still have plenty of room. And with the pass-through right here, that's beneficial because, well, I could stretch my legs out if I needed to. And obviously, there's cup holders back here and also USB options. And for those of you who wanted to have a better view of the panoramic sunroof, there is what we have. Now, when it comes to getting out of this area, I'll use this seat over here. There are a couple of ways to do that. If the battery dies on the vehicle, well, that's what this is for. But I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna use this control right here. So all I'm going to do is push that, hold it down a second time, and again, the entire seat gets up and out of the way and just makes it super easy to gain access to or from the third row. And as we move into the middle row seats, the command center right here, gonna have those cup holders built in, but can control the third zone of the three zones of climate control back here. The fan speed, you have heated seats back here for the middle row passengers, and a multitude of connectivity options as well as you can see. And how about the entertainment? Well, here it is with the screens. We have one on each headrest. And so there's a lot going on here. You can go in and pair Bluetooth headphones. Nothing paired right now, but screen brightness can be changed. And obviously the Bluetooth headphones, nothing connected right now, but that's not a big deal to do that. Even voiceover, if so desired. And if whoever's riding in these back seats says, I really want to learn more about the Yukon XL Denali Ultimate that we're in today. How do we do that? Go to YouTube right here and go to the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel and learn all about it. It works really well. And to turn that off, if somebody wants to, all they have to do is just push or touch the screen right there, and that is taken care of. But there is a lot of room back here. Very comfortable seating with these seats. Armrests right here fold down or up and out of the way, depending on the situation. And if for some reason you want to conceal the panoramic sunroof, well you have the power shade to do just that. And it's time for what could likely be the most eye-popping portion of the video. For those of you saying, hey Tom, what does this Yukon cost if I wanted to come buy it? You already know this model is pre-sold, but if you were going to come buy it, here is the window sticker. I know some of you like to see it, so here's your opportunity to have a good close look. There's the price right there, $105,045. If you come to buy one of these at Morgan Buick GMC, I'll loan you the $45. I can at least help out a little bit. And by the way, you'll see passive entry here on the front and the rear door. So when you have the remote on your person, you can come to either door on either side of the vehicle and push those buttons. You can lock or unlock all four doors. So let's see what you get beyond what I've already shown you for that little price. Yes, I'm being sarcastic and saying little price, but here is what we have. Large armrest again, just like we saw with the back doors here on the front doors, the upper and the lower door bends, but some differences here with the seats. They're power adjustable, they're heated and ventilated. 
You're going to have the ultimate logo right here. Personally, I think that should be in all of the seat backs, but that's just my personal view. You'll only see it here in the front, and guess what? You'll also have speakers built in to the headrest, so a really great sound quality as far as the stereo goes. We're not finished yet. Obviously, these are power adjustable seats here in the front. Right here, that's how you're going to adjust and control the massage function on these seats. Boy, isn't that nice. And then we're going to have some space right here. Whatever anybody can fit in there is going to definitely be a good thing because like I said earlier in the video, you have a lot of storage space throughout the interior for large and small objects. And this area known as the glove box, I always like to call it the gloveless glove box because I never find any gloves in these glove boxes. But there we go. And let me just show you something real quick try and give you the best view I can. So I clicked that control on the side of the seat right there and you can see that I can go in here and make changes to whatever I want as far as the features go for the massage seat. So you can use that on either seat, obviously for the driver or the passenger. Very nice, very convenient. And here is your dual zone climate control for the front seating area. Heated seats, which I can actually use today, and the ventilated seats as well. Now, for those of you who are wondering, at the moment, it's 46 degrees out there. That is a little cool for Northwest Louisiana. We started out at 31 degrees this morning, and I know somebody's probably out there saying, oh, come on, Tom, you're a wimp. It's only going to be 16 degrees where I live. Well, you probably wouldn't have that accent if you say that, unless you live in extreme Northwest Texas. Maybe it'd be cold enough there, but probably not today. So anyway, give you something to laugh at. And if you want to clean things up right here, in this area, well, you can conceal everything away. So that has its advantages, but you also had the advantage of more connectivity. There's a 12 volt power outlet, USB options, and right there, the wireless charging pad. And one advantage to this interior that the current GMC Sierras don't offer as of 2022 is found right here. Why is that? Well, number one, it's a space where you could put your phone. You can also buy an aftermarket wireless charging pad to go right there, and that means you would have two instead of just one. Plenty of space within the center console, so there's a good thing there. And, well, there's a couple of options here. Let's just say your middle row passengers request their beverages. It's almost as if they're being chauffeured around, and they don't want to reach all the way up here. Well, right here is what you can use. I'm going to hold that down, and guess what? There's your sliding, power sliding center console. And that gives a couple of advantages. Not only can it bring the drinks to your middle row seat passengers who think they're too entitled to be able to actually just go ahead and get it themselves, but here is what else you can do. Yes, it's just a joke. Don't get mad at me in the comments section for saying that. People actually do that, believe it or not. It's okay to laugh. You have the additional space right here. Nothing to laugh at where that's concerned additional space and it gives you access to this secret little drawer right here and the good thing is when you use the valet mode the center console is going to be up here and they won't be able to move that to try and figure out if you have any valuables stored in there so that's a good thing that's a really nice feature of many that we have left to look at and in case you were wondering about how to use remote start well what could be easier all you're going to do is hit it twice and the Yukon starts right up. Pretty easy to deal with, and then obviously you can shut the vehicle back down, no problem. And for the most part, you've really already seen the driver's side door panel because I showed you how to use those power folding side view mirrors, and then all of the controls here that you would expect to see. Well, there is everything. You also have two settings for seat memory right here, so that's a good thing. And as we look into the interior, your driving mode selection here, controlling your lights on the exterior of the vehicle, headlights, taillights, and fog lights, everything right there, and some of our additional one-touch features here. You know you have a head-up display when you see these three controls right here, and a power-adjustable steering wheel. It is tilt and telescopically adjustable. And something else. Let's see if it'll work for me here. Yep, here we go we have our animated graphics. I'm just showing you what's here. I know some people are gonna say they don't really care about that, and that's okay, no big deal, but it's here, so I might as well show you that it is. Now, I'm gonna bring that center console back forward again. Here's how fast it works. 
just in case you were curious about that. Now, let's take a look at the instrument cluster or the driver's display that is very easy to deal with depending on what you want to do or need to do as far as your controls go. You can see that we have a few different options and I'm just using the controls right here to go through the different options as far as what's here. Now I went to this screen and again, all I'm doing is arrowing over. You could use either side right here and then you'll use the scroll wheel right here to select whatever it is you may want to change. So you can customize the layout of your dash and you have several different presets here or you can do every area individually depending on what you want to do. And I know some people even don't want to have the likeness of their Yukon right there. You can get rid of that. So if you were curious about that, well, now you know. And if you get to a point where you say to yourself, oh man, I don't really like the way this looks. Well, guess what? You can set it back to defaults right there. And as I mentioned earlier, let's see if we can get this nice and bright, make sure it's as bright as possible. It's not that easy to see, I know. It's just one of those things we run into sometimes with these GoPros, but the head-up display is there. And something else that's here, right here, Super Cruise. Very easy to use if you want to use that. Semi-autonomous driving is what that is. Since this vehicle is pre-sold, I'm not going to be able to show that to you today, but I do have videos where I do show that, so let me know in the comments section if you'd like for me to give you the link to one of those videos, or for those of you who are savvy enough, you can go find it. No big deal. Steering wheel mounted controls, as you can see, and over here we have a multitasker. It controls the windshield wipers, front and rear, uh, front windshield and the rear window, let's say that correctly. And obviously you can run the windshield washer fluid. It also has another function. That is a multitasking lever right there. And some of you might wonder, how did you make that happen? What are those blinking lights up there, Tom? I've never seen that on my vehicle before. Well, that's because you've never used this lever. It corresponds to your blinkers or turn signals on the outside of the vehicle and lets people around you know what you're doing. So something else that's of interest here that I can't really say anything funny about, but it's here. The rear view mirror, and it's the rear view camera mirror. When you flip the lever forward right there, well, there's what you have. Now, I will tell you this, you can adjust it. You can make adjustments to brightness and angle and all that good stuff. But here's the thing. This takes a little bit of getting used to, but I promise once you're used to it, you're not going to want to go back to the conventional view. And depending on if you have three people sitting in that third row or whatever the case is, your view may be blocked back there. So you can take care of that problem right here. And something else that is definitely noteworthy because, well, some people like it, some people don't. Maybe there are some people who are neutral on it and don't really care. Tell me which person you are. But right here, the push button shifter. So what do you think about that? You're going to push it, pull to go into reverse, push to go into neutral, and we'll pull to go into drive. And the L down here, if you're wondering exactly what that is, basically what that does is allows the vehicle to stay in low gear, but you still have all of the horsepower available. So it's not like a grainy gear with some of the manual transmissions on heavy duty vehicles and things like that, that some of us may have experience with from over the years. So you can actually take advantage of all your horsepower, maybe driving in snow, ice, and four wheel drive, whatever the situation is, that's what's there. And the infotainment screen here that has Google Assistant built in that I no longer demonstrate because I often will set off devices in your house, but you don't have to say, hey, you know who to use that. You could go right here and do that and then ask a question. And whatever the case is, I'm not going to do that right now, but you can see that came up right there. So that's what you have where that's concerned. Google Maps right there and everything is voice command activated. So you can adjust the temperature with the air conditioner. You can use navigation right here with voice commands. Pretty simple to deal with. You can pair your phone. It's wireless. As far as your connectivity goes, you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. As you can see down there, those are grayed out because, well, we don't have anything connected right now. And the cameras that will give you every possible angle, every view all around the vehicle, overhead, front, rear, and when you see those two dots right there, you'll have one that will be orange and then that other one that's gray, well, you can select that and that gives you the second view. Same thing with our cameras right here on the side view mirrors. Very easy to deal with. And 
right there. That could help you to hitch up to a trailer without anybody's help if needed, or just to see what's right behind you and how close you are to it. So a pretty simple system to use. I probably don't need to tell you too much about this because I know y'all are smart folks and can figure it out on your own, but you can see what all's here. Trailering, there it is. I mean, there is so much going on here. I'm not going to go full on with showing you everything here, but there are a couple of important things that you might want to know about here as far as your safety features and all the different things that are found within this area under vehicle. You can see what else is there. So teen driver mode, there that is. Pretty simple to deal with, easy. Again, you can use the hunt and peck method if you want to. You can turn buckle to drive off if you want to. I don't recommend driving without your seatbelt on, but if you're driving around in a parking lot, such as when I repositioned this Yukon today, it would have been better to have had that off because I really didn't need to buckle to drive, but just one of those things. And super cruise, lane change, you can make adjustments there. How about your collision detection systems? That's one thing I did want to show you. Here's what you have, just in case you were curious about that. We're not going to spend a ton of time there, but just so you can see, there is so much going on here. Uh, lighting right here, if you want to go in and make changes as far as exit lighting, how long that stays on, or if it's off, you can do it. As you can see, you have your different settings right there. There literally is a setting for just about everything here as far as the vehicle goes. And let's go back here. And one other thing I did want to show you right here. I told you earlier with the power assist steps, you can keep those deployed if you need to. So here's what we're going to do. That's where you go to do that, to move power assist steps. We just push deploy right there. You might have even heard that. I don't know if my microphone picked that up or not but you could actually hear them deploy. So they'll stay deployed until you choose to stow them again. How convenient is that? Literally something for every single situation here. And if you wanted to hear the Bose audio system, well, here's a little sampling for you. Let's see if we get that to play. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too long, and hopefully you got a good sampling of that. I tried to let you hear what it sounds like with the speakers built into the headrests right here, but I don't know that my mic picked that up, but we did the best that we could. And in case you were wondering and you stuck around long enough and said, well, Tom, you showed us the drive mode selector. What are the drive modes? Well, here's what we have. Sport, off-road, tow haul, normal, and then we start back over with sport. Not in that order necessarily, but that's just the direction I happen to turn the dial. And how about this for one more little bit of information. There's just so much here I can't cover it all. We'd make the video too long, but you also have parking sensors and the seat will vibrate in the appropriate area depending on what you need to know about what's going on around you. Okay, I told you we were going to take a quick test drive, at least I think I did earlier, but it is going to be very quick because this model is already pre-sold. So what is it like to drive this, this Yukon XL Denali Ultimate? Well, I say all of that because when you get this model of vehicle, number one, you're going to have magnetic ride control. That is going to help make the ride so smooth. It is unbelievable how comfortable it is in the interior of this Yukon. The seats are comfortable and the ride quality itself is comfortable with the vehicle, with the shock, suspension, all that stuff. You have adaptive air ride. You can't beat that. It's so nice, easy to enjoy driving down the road on long road trips and all that space gives the driver and passenger passengers or I guess it could be a passenger. So either way that works, but it gives them a great experience for getting from point A to point B or point A to point Z, whatever the situation is that you're dealing with. And you have plenty of power here, no matter which of the two available engine options you go with. Like I said earlier, you don't have to go with the 6.2 liter V8. You can go with the three liter diesel engine option that is also available here. So depending on what you want to do, well, you can make your choices 
accordingly on that. Either way, it will be mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission. And as far as adaptive cruise control go, or excuse me, not adaptive cruise, but Super Cruise. See if I can get my brain untwisted there a little bit. Super Cruise definitely is a nice feature to have, but I, a lot of us lived without that for many, many, many years. And this test drive may be a little bit longer than expected, so I don't know. We'll see what happens here with traffic being backed up as it is. But one way or another, you definitely have a vehicle that is very enjoyable to drive. And the thing about it that makes it so nice is that you have a situation where if you're in tight parking, tight confines, and you're saying to yourself, man, I, I don't know if I'm going to hit that car next to me. Well, you've got the cameras all over the vehicle that are definitely going to give you the perfect view for seeing what's going on. So you don't have to worry about that. That's no big deal. Technology here. Didn't mention this earlier in the video, but very easy to learn and use. And going back to Something I know a lot of people like to know about, how does it get down the road as far as acceleration goes? Well, you have plenty of strong acceleration capability. Again, it doesn't matter which engine option you go with. So you're going to have no trouble getting down the road from point A to point B, whichever the situation is, and easy to see out of. You have your blind spot monitoring built into the side view mirrors, and so that's helpful. One way or another, a very solid vehicle to drive no matter what your situation is. So tell me what you think down in the comments section. Is the 2024 GMC Yukon XL Denali Ultimate, besides being a mouthful to say, is it the ultimate full-size SUV? Tell me what your thoughts are and tell me why you answered the way that you did. I'm always curious to receive your feedback. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends at Morgan Buick GMC for loaning me this Yukon for the day. And a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button. That helps me out a lot. And make sure to subscribe to the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel if you haven't done so just yet. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.